Polaroids asked me to show you how to use that little one-step. World's simplest camera. You just press the button and the motor hands you the picture. Not too fast. I'm taking notes. Now, first you have to find the button, but that's easy. It's only got one. It's in the front and it's bright red. Anybody ever flunked this course? Now, when you find the button, press it. Now the hard part's behind you. And Polaroid gives you brilliant color in minutes. There you are. Very pretty. Now, how'd this work again? Get a one-step. Hiring celebrities to promote your product is nothing new. In fact, many would say it's even more prevalent today with influencers and Instagram. That's part of the reason why I love old commercials. They show us the influencers of the time, and as you'll learn, whoever they hired had to suit the audience they were selling to and the product they were promoting. One of the companies that knew that the most was Polaroid. Sometimes the celebrity embodied the product, sometimes they were the product. Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and on this episode of TOC Extra, we take a look at celebrities selling Polaroid. First up, here's a group of well-known actors you might recognize. Happy birthday! Oh my goodness! Make way here! Hot cake, hot cake! Hey everybody! Here comes your present! There you are, happy birthday! Big spender! Oh, used to be Belle! Good looking pig! I've seen better! Polaroid cameras let you see your picture before the candles go out. Cake looks great! Yeah, but don't cut it! What? It's rented. Rented? Whoa, well, rent yourself another pig! And give me my picture! Polaroid means fun! With the button! The Muppets need no introduction, of course, and here we see them celebrating Miss Piggy's birthday just before they go on stage. What may need an introduction is this, the Time Zero One-Step Camera, an upgraded or possibly just repainted one-step to complement the Time Zero Super Color film that Polaroid heavily promoted in the late 70s and early 80s. It seems odd, but this was a Polaroid film that had you seeing the image in seconds rather than minutes. Not even Fujifilm Instax can claim that in 2020. The colors were punchy, rich, and that's likely why they chose the Muppets as their spokes puppets. A super easy way to showcase a lot of different colors in one image. Here's another Time Zero commercial starring James Gardner and Marriott Hartley. Okay, I'm beautiful. Now, on to the party. Oh, I want proof of this. No, you don't. We're late already. Don't worry, this is the world's fastest developing color. You see it's seconds now, not minutes. Well, there's your proof. Go on, get it all out of your system. The Time Zero One Step and Time Zero Super Color Film are made for each other. That's why they both come in Polaroid's new made for each other pack. Feel better now? Okay, let's go. You taking that to the party? Why not? I'm taking you. Made for each other. James Gardner was known for The Rockford Files and The Great Escape, and also later appearances in movies such as The Notebook and Space Cowboys. Marriott Hartley was also accomplished in her career, though I have to admit, other than Encino Man, I don't recognize any of them. This isn't the only commercial with this on-screen couple either. They would be in many Polaroid commercials spanning years. Uh, they also promoted sun cameras, and here's Hartley promoting the Amigo with Kermit. Introducing Polaroid's new Amigo. E. C. C. Hold it, sister. Sister? This way, frog. <laughs> Amigo's a new friend that's full of fun. Explain the redhead. Polaroid center. Oh, Peachy, just Peachy. It's the lowest priced camera to use the same film as the sun camera. How's it going, dear? And there's our new 600 speed picture. Beautiful. She'll never replace me, will she, Kermit? He. You shouldn't have asked. New amigo. These two had a great little back and forth with playful banter. Garner was the informer, and Hartley was the model and critic. This relationship dynamic was, and still is, a popular one, and normally I'm annoyed at the stereotype of the tech-loving guy and the woman who rolls her eyes at him. But this was cute, and Garner dished as much as he took. Spectacular. But who named it Time Zero? You? Polaroid, why? Oh, I love it. Mm. In fact, their on-screen chemistry was so convincing that it was assumed by the public they were married, or at least having an affair, to the point where Hartley wore a t-shirt saying, I am not Mrs. Garner, and had similar shirts made for her husband and child. I can only imagine all the extra publicity was good for Polaroid. Next, we go back a few years and take a look at Candace Bergen with a Polaroid Pronto. Pronto? 
SX-70 picture magnifying glass to show what sharp pictures Polaroid's low-priced little automatic can give you. With the new Super Clear SX-70 film, Pronto hands you beautiful locked-in color that develops in minutes. It's light but fully automatic, loaded with SX-70 features. Easiest camera Polaroid ever made. What do you say? It's clear it's got to be Pronto! The Pronto came with the suggested retail price of 66 USD in 1976 money, or $300 by today's standards. This was meant to be an inexpensive alternative to the folding SX-70. Now I know Candace Bergen from TV's Murphy Brown, but this was before then and she's already an accomplished actress by this time. The Pronto was one of many automatic integral film cameras released by Polaroid in the mid to late 70s designed for the average consumer. Polaroid creator Edwin Land didn't like the idea of making plastic toy-like cameras and preferred the sophistication and elegance of the SX-70. Of course, we know that eventually he was persuaded. You can tell by the commercials for the SX-70, they were playing to a different audience. The age of miracles. A pocket size, folding, electronically controlled, motor-driven, Single lens reflex camera, but quite simply does the impossible. Come a bit closer. The Polaroid SX70 land camera. The 10 picture film pack. Inside this, there is a wafer thin battery providing fresh power to the camera every time you load. Protective cover. For indoors, the flash bar. Now, focus. Frame. Touch the electric button, and the impossible happens. In minutes, you have a finished photograph of dazzling beauty. That is the Polaroid SX-70 experience. Ever seen an actor and you're like, I know that guy, but I can't name a single movie or TV appearance? That's Lawrence Oliver to me. While this commercial looks rather dull, watching someone on TV load a camera, add a flash, and take a photo in real time was nothing short of magic. The original SX-70 was an amazing feat in technology, both with the film and the camera. It was common to hear people refer to it as doing the impossible, an absolute one-step photography. Up until the SX-70, instant film was limited to peel apart, and the release of this camera in 1972 was also the world premiere of integral instant film. No longer are the chemicals sandwiched between paper, but in a contained pack at the bottom of the frame that burst and spread when ejected, followed by an orchestra of time-released chemicals and dozens of micro-thin layers within the film. Edwin Land, inventor of the Polaroid, still wasn't satisfied until they figured out a way to get that camera into a jacket pocket. I guess he figured, what's the point of an instant camera if you cannot also access it in an instant? Considering they went through all that trouble, I find it funny that several years later they would upgrade to the SX-70 with a sonar-based autofocusing system. That basically threw the claim of making it fit into your pocket right out the window, especially if you were adding a flash bar. But this was the race to autofocus and a lot of companies tried cutting corners to get there first by sacrificing form factor. A good example of that is the Pentax MEF. They kept that super snooty level of sophistication in their marketing though. Remarkable, Polaroid's SX-70 sonar. A motor-driven, single-lens reflex camera that simply does the impossible. Sound waves focus it automatically, so you can spend your time shooting instead of focusing. Everything is electronically controlled to give you exquisite photographs in minutes. Polaroid's SX-70 sonar. The finest instant camera ever made. Another thespian I'm sure many of us recognize but can't quite pinpoint is Christopher Plummer. I was like, man, this guy looks so familiar. So I took a deep dive onto his IMDb page and then it hit me. Tickle us, do we not laugh? Prick us, do we not bleed? Wrong us, shall we not revenge? Come on, Plummer, you're dressed as a Klingon. 
You're not in the theater. Stop quoting Shakespeare. To be or not to be. A true thespian to the end. As you have seen so far, Polaroid was all about the innovation. Edwin Land and his company were constantly looking to create the next generation of consumer products. This didn't always work out though. A great example of that is Polavision. I know, I know. Pola what, right? Polavision was in a nutshell the home movie version of the instant photo. The idea was you shot your video with one of these cassettes, then could immediately plug it into a special viewing screen and watch it right away. No transferring of film, no developing. And who better to promote the idea of instant home movies than White Christmas star Danny Kay? Now you look through here and you squeeze, okay? Hurry up. Now just drop it in and come over here. This is Polar Vision, Polaroid's instant movies. <laughs> Imagine how this would go over at your house. Now in the commercial, it looks great, but between no sound, an ISO of just 40, and a larger price tag than Super 8, Polavision was a huge flop. This wouldn't be the last time Polaroid would make a mistake either. Here's another example of that. Jumping forward to the early 90s, the company started doing a lot less innovation and a lot more scrambling for ideas. One of those was the Polaroid Captiva. What's up, Sinbad? This amazing new Polaroid Captiva camera. Amazing. It's sleek, streamlined, and takes picture after picture. So where's the picture? Inside the camera's pocket. So my hands are free to <laughs> take another picture. Now where's the picture? Ha <laughs> ha. Yo, check her out. It's in your pocket. I knew that. Well, let me see the picture. I'll trade you for the camera. You have to ask my mama. You live with your mama? The new Polaroid Captiva. I remember Sinbad from the television series A Different World and some of his stand-up comedy. The Captiva had smaller instant photos and held on to them while you were able to keep shooting. Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, it was another flop. This format is no longer available with no plans of being reintroduced by the current manufacturer of Polaroid. Jumping a few more years ahead to 1997, we have this minute long Polaroid commercial with a big reveal at the end. I've shortened it for review purposes, but I didn't take anything crucial out. Let's take a look. Polaroid. The Spice Cam was, as you've gathered, a Spice Girls endorsed Polaroid 600 camera. Along with the 60 second ad you just saw, each Spice Girl had their own 10 second spot, all in promotion of Polaroid's new 600 Extreme Film. Baby and Scary Spice promoted the extreme matte film you could draw on, Ginger and Sporty promoted fast color gloss film, and Posh Spice promoted monochrome. Before the cameras were even made though, Polaroid had issues. Polaroid had just placed an order with the company for a set of mold tools, says Steve Baker, IT director of Accurate, a tooling company. That company was subsequently unable to fulfill the contract and we were involved in a critical recovery exercise to put out all the stops and meet a revised schedule. Accurate had to enlist further help because as Baker says, as the job progressed, we found we were being asked to incorporate design changes. Some of these were even requested after we had started cutting the metal. In the book, What Would the Spice Girls Do? by Lauren Bravo, Mel B is quoted telling her mother, it's great because you can take rude photos without the chemist seeing. When referring to the Spice Cam, I guess we'll never know what the nuns saw that day. You can imagine the Spice Cam was always meant to be a flash in the pan and never outlived the popularity of the Spice Girls themselves. But if you really, really want to find one, you can check eBay. 
And this has been a look at Celebrity Selling Polaroid. I hope you enjoyed this nostalgic trip with me. I know I didn't catch them all by a long shot, so be sure and let me know which commercials I missed in the comments section. This was a fun look at Polaroid commercials for me. This video actually started out as a catch-all celebrities selling cameras, but I found so many for just Polaroid, I made this video instead. If you'd like to see celebrities selling other cameras, let me know that too. If you like what I do around here, please consider becoming my patron on Patreon. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic.